In this tutorial, we are going to go over global objects. Now, we've been talking about objects in general, and we created this orc object, which of course is a custom object. This is one that we created for ourselves, but there are also global objects that JavaScript provides that we can use. Now that we know what an object is, and you will remember an object basically contains properties and methods, and we call them, of course, using the object name and using the period to access whatever it is we want to access. Now, as I said, JavaScript also provides global objects, and these are basically objects that we can use anywhere in our JavaScript code. And the nice thing about these objects is they are already are written for us, and they give us certain types of functionality that we may want to use in our JavaScript program. So again, we can call them anywhere we want inside our JavaScript program. And so as I said, we can use the properties and methods. And now that we know how an object is constructed, we know exactly what that means. Now the first global object that we're going to look at in this lecture is the string object. Now we've been talking about standalone or primitive variables. And these are variables basically that contain one value. They can contain a string, an integer, or a boolean, which of course is a true or false. Now what happens is JavaScript provides some objects based off the type of data type that we're using. So for instance, this of course is a string variable. And since we're using a string variable, JavaScript provides a string object that we can call that gives us all this functionality in relation to strings. And so that's again what we're going to go over in this video. Now in the next video, we'll talk about math and number objects. And we can use those to do all sorts of things as well. So let's pull up a little JavaScript program here. And I've created a string variable, and it just contains the sentence, hello, how are you doing? So a nice string that we have. Now, what happens, like I said, there is a string object that JavaScript provides. And so what happens here is once JavaScript determines that this is a string variable, it basically takes this string object and wraps it around our variable. And it basically it enables us to use all of the methods and properties in the string object in our string variable. And so now, like I said, we can use the methods and properties in the string object to do all of these neat little things against our string. And what's also interesting is we don't have to write out string dot since it's wrapped around our string variable, we can just call it using our string variable name. Like I said, we don't actually have to use the string name here. It's already there because JavaScript has wrapped it around our string variable for us. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the more popular properties and methods that we can call to do all sorts of things against our string. So let's first call a method. And this is a very common method that's used in JavaScript. And it's the to uppercase method. And you guessed it, it will take all of these characters and convert them to uppercase. Now there's another method called lowercase. And I think you get an idea what that does. And actually, since we're changing the value here, we need to use the equals operator. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see, now our string is converted to uppercase. Now, of course, we have to use the parenthesis to call this method, but there are also properties within the string object as well. And one of those is the length property. And you can see right here, the IntelliSense that we get from Notepad++ gives us the length property. You can, by the way, you can see all these different properties that you can call. There's quite a few of them. So you can look through those and uh, read up on some of them. But anyways, we're going to call the length property, and we'll go ahead and run this. and we get 23. Now what that means is there are 23 characters within this string, and they're actually called units. Now like an array, it'll actually start out counting the first character with a zero. So this would be an index of zero, this would be one, two, three, four. It would actually count the empty space, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 on the last character. Now you might be asking, wait a minute, we just got 23. Well, it throws an extra unit after the last character. So that's why we get 23. So just remember again that when you use this property, the index always starts out at a zero, kind of like an array index does. Now let's take a look at another useful method. And this is called the 
car at or care at method. And again, we need open parentheses. Now we're going to actually pass a value into this and we're going to pass, let's pass four. And what this will do is give us the character that's at the fourth index. So zero, one, two, three, four. So we should get an O because that, that's at the fourth index spot. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get an O, which is what we wanted. Now let's take a look at another useful method, which is the replace method. Okay, now what this does is it basically will replace the word doing, and the word that you want to replace has to go in this first position, and then there's a comma. So we'll replace the word doing with the word today, and the new word that we're going to use has to go in the second position. So that's how that works. So now this string should say, hello, how are you today? So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see now we get the today word, which is what we wanted in this phrase. So it reads, hello, how are you today? So that's exactly what we wanted. Now we can also make the text in this string bold by using the bold method. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you can see there's the bold method. And we'll go ahead and run this. And now you can see our text is bold. And we can even italicize our text using the italics method. And there you can see we got the expected result. Okay, that's going to do it for the string object. In the next video, we will discuss the math and number object.